All right, well, welcome everybody, and thank you for taking the time to be with us here today and for your patience as we started uh, the webinar today. This webinar is being brought to you by UC Irvine Extension, and today's topic is test-driven development. We'll be talking about uh, a, a course, a related course here at UCI, and also just the process of test-driven development. But before we get going, just wanted to remind everybody of how the webinar works uh, we do have the audio lines uh, on mute to cut down on the background noise. So use the chat area in the right side of the screen. And let's see, for you guys, that should be somewhere. Let's turn it to a nice red color here. You can see me here. Uh, right about there on the right side of your screen, uh, toward the bottom should be the Q&A area. Possibly uh, you might have right about here. Uh, the chat area, but use either one of those areas to post questions at any time uh, for myself or for our program planner, Jackie, who's also on the line, uh, about this, the programs, about the, 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 the industry, who's hiring, anything that we can do to, uh, to help. Uh, one of the things we do here at UC Irvine is help develop the workforce, uh, and we interact a lot with people that are in different positions in their lives, transitioning between jobs, uh, coming out of the military service, uh, whatever it is, we, we do that. And we try to provide opportunities like this one for people to get skills in areas that are in high job demand. And again, test-driven development and related things and agile development are things that are in very high demand. Well, today we're really fortunate to have Mohammed El Mala with us. Uh, Mohammed has been a, a key instructor for us for many years and also an, an advisor in this whole area of software development and in agile software development, two, two areas that are really strong in the job market. Uh, he has a master's and bachelor's degree and, and several certifications and currently is the manager of enterprise applications and architecture for the Children's Hospital here in Los Angeles. He's got more than two decades of IT experience empowered by strong hands-on experience with really almost all phases of software development, lifecycle development. The database side, the ERP and CRM implementations, uh, business intelligence uh, solutions, uh, content management, and as we talked about, agile methods. And then the other very strong area is certainly in the uh, mobile application development. Uh, and again, he's been an instructor here and at other universities of California for many years. Mohammed, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks, David. Appreciate the introduction. Okay, and I am passing the ball to you, and you should be good. So if you just share, reshare your screen, you're going to have to pull it down to uh, share my screen again. And then there we go. And now we see all your stuff. Perfect. So um, thanks, Dave, for uh, the introduction again. Uh, my name is Mohamed Amala, and um, I'll be taking you through an introduction um, of the Test Driven Development course that we are very excited uh, to offer it um, uh, for the first time um, this spring. So um, let's start with the agenda. Uh, we started a little bit late, so um, I'll uh, be careful to leave uh, maybe five minutes at least at the end uh, for questions. Uh, but the idea is to give uh, an introduction about myself, which Dave started, but I will maybe uh, add a couple of things. Um, an introduction to the course, um, uh, how we envision the course to, uh, uh, to happen. And then um, a little bit of a reminder about agility, uh, just in case if anybody out there uh, is not clear um, on our approach to the agility, our definition of what is really uh, an agile methodology. Um, and then we'll focus on testing, since they're really, really this is the umbrella um, uh, of this course. And then we'll talk about quality assurance, few terminologies and definitions um, that are important for this course. Um, and then uh, unit testing is considered to be really the cornerstone of the test-driven uh, development, and I'll maybe call it uh, from now on TDD, um, and this is why it's important to uh, describe unit testing just in case, again, if there are people out there that uh, are not necessarily developers, so from time to time we get people uh, that are project management uh, or project managers or PMs to be, 
Um, and this is why sometimes we uh, take a little bit of time to describe some of the basics, uh, like what is a unit test. Um, and then we'll uh, hopefully also introduce the TDD, uh, refactoring. So the idea behind this um, is really to give you uh, uh, maybe a, a taste of what the course will look like, but definitely the course will take those and elaborate more and, uh, through quizzes and homeworks and projects um, that um, basically bring these ideas to uh, practicality. We'll talk about continuous integration and continuous deployment as two main pillars uh, to really achieve successful TDD uh, projects, and we'll talk about BDD and ATDD. We'll, we'll describe those as we, we go through them, a little bit of tools, some extra resources, and again, uh, QA uh, at the end. Uh, so this is the profile um, uh, that I have, a uh, bachelor, master, and um, uh, really concentration on agility, um, healthcare or healthcare IT, uh, open source and, and big data, uh, including the BI, um, as they've mentioned. And um, if you're interested in uh, following me on Twitter or connecting with me on uh, LinkedIn, these are my profiles and these are my two email addresses uh, that I check regularly. So feel free to uh, email me with any uh, specific question that you might have on the course or on uh, TDD overall. Uh, the course that uh, we're offering will start on the 14th uh, of April um, and uh, will wrap up on the 8th of June. Uh, the main uh, uh, objectives, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but for now, the main objective we're trying to, to teach how to develop an efficient test methodology that is practical um, and makes sense and fits nicely with the Agile methodology. And at the same time, we want to leverage existing uh, skills as well that you have learned um, in your Agile uh, journey, as well as as an object-oriented programmer or designer or, or, or tester or, and so on. So we're not saying that you should throw everything away and, and learn everything from scratch just because we're, we're learning TDD. A lot of what you have learned and what you've been using um, could be reused. Few things will be challenged, and I, I will hammer on that a little bit. Um, but many of the things that uh, hopefully you've used un under Agility will be still be reused. Uh, we'll, we'll talk uh, and hopefully teach you how to uh, smell uh, your code and kind of um, focus on the areas are, that are more vulnerable, um, so basically being more efficient in, in your testing, but at the same time, uh, don't leaving, uh, without leaving any rock um, unturned, so uh, minimize the surprise surprises um, as you're coding and you're testing and your uh, sprints, uh, which will include refactoring uh, to improve the code quality. We'll talk again about the PDD, which is behavior-driven de development, and how is that maybe uh, different and similar uh, to TDD. And um, uh, a large area that we'll focus on maybe towards the end of the course is dealing with external dependencies. Uh, which are the code that uh, not necessarily you have written yourself. Um, can everybody still see my screen? Jackie or Dave, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Perfect. Uh, for some, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, so actually, again, Mohammed. Go ahead. Mohammed, no, you you fall you fell out of the. I did. There, you're back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jackie, somebody has to pass Mohammed the presentation, the presenter okay. ball. Okay, let me just try that again. And then Mohammed, you have to reshare your desktop.
Hold on, Sarah. Um, hmm. If Dave's uh, computer is available, you right click yeah, Mohammed. Okay, right click his name and change role to presenter. Yeah, thank you, John. There you go. Mohammed, you're the presenter. You need to reshare your. There you go. And unmute yourself as well. We can't hear you yet, Mohammed. You have to. You have to un uh, try on your telephone star six. There you go. Got it. Okay. Sorry, I don't. I don't know why it muted me automatically. Okay. So uh, just uh, repeating what it's I just said a minute. Go ahead. That dealing with external dependencies. Nothing. It's it's automatic. Automatic uh, mute, mute on entry. So there's no. That, that's all it was. Got it. All right. Um, so uh, the external dependencies and legacy code are important because if you have multiple teams developing your applications, um, then you you have those dependencies that you don't have full control on, um, and you want to test your code. So it's very important for the methodology to be successful. That, uh, you, that the framework that you're using allow you to mock these subsystems and these components so you still can test your code that make the call to the web services and what have you, um, even though that this external system might not be ready yet, but uh, you will be able to test your code uh, still. Uh, the prerequisites for, uh, for the course are really fundamentals of uh, Agile methodologies. We have a course that covers that. Um, but if you have an equivalent knowledge of this, um, that also should um, uh, suffice. Um, some programming experience, uh, specifically in object-oriented language like C Sharp or Java, these are too popular. But if you have any other, um, you know, equivalent, if, even if it's like Python um, or PHP, um, that could also uh, suffice. But the idea is we we assume some of these knowledge um, as we talk about writing codes and ask people really to uh, write pseudocode and so on. So programming is, is needed um, uh, for this course to benefit the most of it. You don't have to be an expert, but again, uh, some experience. Um, a, co um, a book that we've used uh, or I've used in teaching the design and, and development, uh, Agile, the design and development course, and we found uh, uh, very successful with most of the people, newcomers and experts and what have you, is the clean code um, by Robert C. Martin, um, and uh, it's highly recommended for people to read it. Again, it's not a, a mandatory for this course, um, but it, it's something that I, I, I felt, and most of the feedback that I got from the, my students uh, is that they found the book to be very helpful. So even though that it's not um, very recent, few years old, um, it, it's still uh, it's very valuable and provide um, a lot of. Um, needed information for anybody that wants to do a job development so that be coding or testing. Um, the course material, they are not mandatory for this course, but kind of um, maybe recommended. Um, the Agile Testing Book um, uh, by Lisa and Janet, um, again, a few years old, but a very good book uh, overall. Um, and there is another one that is specific to TDD. Um, this is quote unquote by the one who wrote the book about the uh, test driven development TDD, who is Kent Beck. Uh, maybe some of you would know he's the one that uh, invented the extreme programming methodology. So uh, he's um, uh, definitely uh, a known name uh, when it comes to agile methodologies overall, and, and his book still um, is considered to be one of the main references um, uh, for TDD. And, um, again, it's not a must that you go ahead and read it. I think we'll cover a lot of the materials ourselves, but it's something to consider uh, to buy this book. 
Uh, one recent uh, book that um, I, I read, and I think it, it's uh, uh, because it's rec recent, and not only just because of the, um, uh, the terminology that they're using and, and, uh, or the author is using, but also the tools um, that they're using, like, for example, uh, the, the Mokito um, uh, framework um, is something uh, that I think worthwhile also. Uh, so this is a rather recent book. Um, and um, I'll, I'll be using a little bit of it as a reference, um, but uh, you're free also, especially if interested in learning Mokito, um, to, to buy the book. Um, and then these are very specific, since iOS development is, is, uh, is popular within the mobile development and within the um, Apple community uh, or development community, that's something that also to be considered for people that are interested in iOS specific, how to do TTTs in iOS. Same thing for JavaScript, for the people out there that use um, JavaScript a lot, and, and many of us do. Um, there are JavaScript-specific test-driven books, and, and as you know, JavaScript is really very unique in its nature. Um, so I think it's also something to consider, uh, because debugging usually uh, JavaScript is, uh, is uh, challenging, and I think TDD is uh, shining or usually shines when it comes to JavaScript. So saying that, uh, let's talk more about the learning objectives of the course. Um, we want to define, of course, what is TDD, what are the advantages, and maybe some of the disadvantages of TDD or challenges. Um, we explain how it can be utilized, um, describe three factoring because it really goes hand in hand, um, even though we will not dig deep into refactoring. And this is why, for example, I didn't mention the refactoring book that I usually use, um, but uh, that we will share in, in the course material. Uh, we'll talk in more details about the concept, the, the, the steps, uh, how we make sure that you know your clean code helps in your TDDs, um, and any design patterns that we usually uh, use uh, that goes well with the TDD concepts. Um, as I mentioned, again, the mocking. Uh, we'll talk about popular tools, and again, uh, unit testing is considered really to be the cornerstone, so we'll have to talk about that, uh, especially for the people that haven't done this themselves, that will we'll have an exercise and a homework to cover this to make sure that people really benefit from the TDD. You need to uh, be comfortable with unit testing, and in unit it's just the .NET equivalent of the JUnit, but you feel free to use any other framework that helps you with the, with the unit testing. Uh, there is mock, which is again mocking a framework that we'll talk about, and there are test runners out there that will help us. And we talked about Makito as well as another framework that we will um, use or at least recommend uh, using for people to do their exercises. Uh, we'll talk about the variations, and I did mention those, and if we'll have time today, I'll talk about them briefly. And we'll talk about pitfalls of the TDD. I think introducing the TDD to your team might be the best next step. Um, that, that you can take out of this uh, course. Um, the idea is um, not to do this as a silo, um, uh, as an agile team, and, and most of you uh, would know that, is, is really it's about teamwork, um, whether it be between developers themselves or between developers and the business side of the house or d developers and the, the project management uh, side of the house, even though that agile kind of um, uh, change that m paradigm a little bit of, of having uh, a PMO office, but it's a fact of life that a lot of our organizations out there do have PMOs, and um, it's, it's very um, you know unpractical to to think that the PMO will disappear, uh, the project management office, and and and, uh, and be uh, consumed into the development team. So it's very important uh, in this case if you have a PMO office that. Uh, you explain TDD to them, and the project managers, um, not necessarily your scrum masters, um, will have to also buy in into the TDD. So everything when it comes to the sprint planning, and then everything when it comes to budgets and expectations and milestones that might be outside of, of your development team will be set according to the methodology that you're using, and the expectation will be um, you know, uh, shared between different stakeholders. So again, it's, it's something that we need to uh, um, keep doing as an agilist um, that, or as agilists, is to first um, teach agile methodologies and TDD 
not as a project manager, but actually as developers, so we'll learn how to benefit from them and how to use practical ways to implement them, and that's, I think, why I love and be enthusiastic about this certificate overall that UCI Extension offers, because it doesn't talk about methodology and PM only, but talks about real uh, implementation of how to take that further to the developer and to the tester. Uh, but at the same time, we want to make sure that the development team is not de-associated uh, from the other teams out there, and they're bringing these teams to the Agile platform and, and both uh, share the same vision. So the course outline, uh, this is an abbreviated version of it, uh, uh, talks about everything I think we, we talked about briefly, so I don't have to uh, talk about each one. But the idea is there will be discussions, there will be quizzes, there will be homeworks, and there will be group projects. Depending on the size of the of the or the number of students enrolled, um, uh, you know, the group could be small or, or, or large. But the idea is we'd like people to talk to each other because you benefit from talking to other people, um, whether it be in the same domain or a different domain. So, for example, I work in healthcare. Use cases that I will mention might be influenced by that, but I think it adds into um, your experience to talk to other people because they bring in all this experience with them. And I think these discussions and group projects really benefit. It's not only me trying to, um, you know, uh, knowledge transfer and give you that knowledge, but also between among or amongst yourself, um, or the students can learn from each other, and I can learn actually in many times. I've learned a lot of things from my students, which which is great. Uh, this is, goes without saying, but we need to remind ourselves of the uh, Agile and what is it all about. Um, so that's kind of a reminder, but I think most of the people know it by now. Um, it's all about responding to change. We should be mentally ready for change and, and accepting the change and, and as efficient in responding to change as possible. Uh, motives that we found out there, and, and there's the State of Agility survey that you can check and, and request a copy from version one company, um, and, and basically uh, TDD has always been there. People like TDD, uh, at least a good portion of people out there like TDD and understand the value of TDD, and sometimes they, 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 uh, they implement or adopt agile methodologies because they TDD portion of it, uh, at least uh, uh, a few people think that TDD should be um, uh, the way to go. Um, we don't expect everybody to be TDD, but I think it's something for everybody to consider, and based on everything else, um, you can decide for yourself based on the project, the, 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 you know, the organization around you, the people readiness, and all of that, you can decide um, when and if you want to implement TDD. Agile testing is, is really the nature of testing has changed. In the old days, I'm sure some of you, especially the ones that have maybe graduated or starting with IT uh, like me uh, 10 years ago or more, um, we, uh, we've seen you know large um, uh, projects with uh, months and months of um, testing uh, that takes forever and, and you generate hundreds and hundreds of bugs and enhancement requests that takes, again, another month and a month of development, and the cycle takes years. This definitely has changed uh, dramatically, and um, TDD is one of many other outcomes that proves to us um, that proves to us that really um, that people have changed, and that they want now small iterations and, and, and better testing methodologies and, and tools. So um, uh, the business analyst, and I think this is the, the, one of the key uh, deliverable of this course, is the business analyst um, uh, who, if you have such a title, if you have pure um, agile team, then you might not have such a title, and, and many of your developers will act as the business analysts and the owners of requirements. But uh, in any way, either they are, it, it's a, a dedicated title, and there's a specific person that does this and doesn't do coding, or if, if he or she is a developer and at the same time responsible for uh, your stories and, and, and your features. Um, either way, um, he needs or she needs to think about how to test the story from day one. So as you talk to the end users, as you talk to your stakeholders, you're not only trying to understand what they're doing now, what they want to do, what is the best way to do it, but also as part of this thinking process, you're thinking, 
how can I test that? How can I make sure that I can test that feature easily? So that's as part of your thinking. And this is maybe the, the one of the challenging pieces about the TDD. We are used to the fact that we will code it first, test it later, think about testing, think, think about testing data, testing tools, testing framework, testing environment, all of that later. What TDD brings to the table, and even if you're not going to you know, <laughs> implement TDD by the book, what it will bring to you is at least it will highlight and stress the importance of thinking about testing early on. Think about who should be doing the testing, how you will be doing the testing very early on. I think that's, uh, if anything, one of the most important messages that we're trying to deliver uh, from this course. So you're de working with the developers, you will define what it means for a certain story, for example, or a certain iteration to be done. What does it really mean? And, and not just verbally, by proving it with a test. What type of tests, if they succeed or if they pass, I would consider that story to be done, completed, and I can jump to the second one. That practical definition is one of the most important deliverable of a test-driven uh, methodology. Uh, these business-related business or readable tests can be automated as regression test suites using acceptable uh, acceptance testing frameworks. So the idea is once you think about those, then now the second step would be how can I automate that testing because you don't want to end up, yes, you've defined your, your test, um, you thought about it at the beginning, but still it's manually or mostly manually tested, and that's time consuming, and it will defeat the purpose. The part of that thinking process you need to think about, how can I automate that testing so I can repeat it over and over again, and that's basically how we can achieve responding faster to change. If you can test faster, and you can prove to um, your end users and other stakeholders that your uh, the story is done and completed and uh, works, um, that I think will speed up the whole uh, process of developing uh, good software that actually matters so that the users will use. So that's independent testing by people outside of the team is a good supplemental practice. That's usually um, a good thing to do. So this is why we have user uh, acceptance testing. And this is what we meant by ATDD, which is acceptance test driven development, which is don't just think about TDD as unit testing within the development team because you can easily um, be sidetracked by the fact that you're always thinking about happy path. As developers, we tend to think about happy path. Um, the, the, the outside team, that will be from users or QA team or what have you, um, they are the ones that challenge that notion and think about other cases for us. And, and hopefully the earlier we test that and think about that, the better uh, the, the solution is. Um, that's where we talked about the continuous integration. So basically uh, speed up the regression testing and the integration work that you need to do with other pieces of software. And that will also include continuous deployment because you do this in your development machines or sandboxes or you know in the cloud right now. Uh, you, you develop some of that. It's very important to make sure that you can deploy from all of these non-production into your production or deploy from development to test or from test to staging or from staging into um, uh, uh, production. So when we say deployment, we're not necessarily talking about non-prod to prod, but within the non-prod as well, um, as um, we will talk about in details if we have the time in the next slide. Um, that will also address uh, test-driven uh, uh, methodologies, address also technical depth, because part of the TDD is uh, the refactoring and the ability. If you think about testing and you have a good framework for testing, um, you will be more inclined to actually handle your technical depth because your test cases are there. You can easily run them or relatively easily run them um, uh, automatically. You can deploy automatically. Um, so if you have those taken care of early on in your project, you will find yourself be able to say, okay, let me refactor, for example, the naming of my 
um, uh, sort procedures, or let me refactor a certain design pattern, or let me upgrade some uh, framework to a later framework uh, version. Uh, you will be able to do a lot of that because you're more comfortable, you're more secure when it comes to your testing um, methodology. Um, so other items are, are really standard. I think most of you would agree that we will need a repository, um, uh, source control, um, a versioning uh, tools that allows us to, again, feel that confidence that, okay, if I mess something up, I can go back and revert my changes. So that actually gives you, again, the confidence to handle these technical debts because if you did uh, something that was completely um, not workable, you can cancel and go back to an earlier release. That will take us to unit testing. And um, as everybody agrees, catching defects early is a critical part. And definitely, if the developer can catch uh, his or her bug, that is the best uh, early uh, as he's writing it or right after he writes the code that's really is the best case scenario instead of sending it to yet another team to discover the bug. So the, the earlier we find the bug, the better. So unit testing um, allows us to, to do a lot of that. The, the thing about unit testing, as the, ner the name implies, it, it's really unit. So it's just a piece. Um, as you start generating more and more of this code, you have to think about the system and, and the integration testing because these are really beyond your scope of um, thinking as you start handling it. Because if you, again, if you start thinking about all of that as you're writing your small piece of code, you might just paralyze yourself because you're, you're just thinking too much about everything else that's out there. You need to focus on the piece of code and the specific use cases in hand, but once you finish it, hopefully your unit testing and the other testing as it's being automated will help you in taking that code and these changes all the way to uh, production. So uh, a, a general guideline, not really a science, but 80% coverage, um, uh, you know, but unit, unit testing that you have in your code and we'll mention or we'll show one case just in case of there is um, somebody out there that haven't seen a unit test um, before. As we mentioned, it's very important for TDD, that's why we're defining it and we will be talking about it and giving exercises in the, uh, early in the course about it because if you understand unit testing, you will understand TDD. You will be able to be in a better position to implement successful um, TDD. Uh, these are the J unit and N unit. Um, some basics out there. Um, as we've mentioned, you uh, perform some activity to set up your test, which is like data work or what have you. You execute your test, your unit test. You verify its results. And um, again, if you verify the results, it's either fail or pass. If it passes, you're good. If it doesn't pass, you will have to fix your code and see what's the problem. The idea is you don't have to uh, send it to the Q18 to do that for you. Um, it's already most of that testing will be in your code. Um, uh, so you will be able to uh, speed up, um, uh, hopefully, your testing overall. So that's an example. Yeah, if let's say that you're writing a code to add uh, two numbers, so uh, an addition uh, a method, um, you will write uh, these test cases. Um, TDD will tell you to write those first before you actually write the method that implements the addition. So you'll say, okay, what are the you know cases that I think of uh, like zero? So zero plus you know zero equals zero. That's a, a test case, and then one plus one, and then you think about n plus um, uh, uh, x or x plus y, which is all the way at the end, the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 9, 8, 8. Uh, so you'll think about those and then think about other things like negative. What happened if, if I added two negative numbers or one negative and one positive? So all of these combinations to have that coverage that we talked about. And again, TDD tells you to write those first. And once you wrote them, then you start writing the method to actually implement it. And then the, most of the IDEs, the, the development tools out there, let it be Visual Studio or Eclipse or what have you, have um, either built-in or plugins for all of these unit testing that helps you to write, to generate some of this uh, code, um, or at least the uh, boilerplates for it automatically, um, and allows you also to execute it automatically and, and helps you overall to, uh, to work with unit testing. That will take us to TDD. Um, TDD, as I mentioned, required discipline because it says um, you need to write your test code first before you actually write the code, which is something 
that uh, most of the developers are not used to, as I mentioned before. Most of the development still, even in agile methodology, they want to design, um, at least think about the design a little bit, and then write the code first, and then test uh, that code later once they think it's ready for testing. Um, TDD challenged that and says, no, write the test. And the main reason behind that, um, at least uh, what a lot of the TDD um, uh, evangelists will say, is if you don't write your test first, most likely you will not write it at all. Yes, you'll still test it manually or whatever you know the QA team will ask you to do or will do, but um, if you really are, want to automate your testing, um, it, it's really imperative that you write your test first. That will make your job easy. If you write your code first, most likely you will run from one story to the other uh, and you will not do the testing uh, code afterwards. Uh, so the first step is to quickly add a test, really, um, uh, before, again, you think about the, how you will implement the, the story, you think how to write the test itself. And then you run the test. Of course, it will fail because you haven't written uh, the, the, the code yet. So you're making sure that your test works. So in another term, you're testing your test code, um, at least uh, one story of that, which is the failure. Uh, and then you start adding your code. Uh, of course, this is high level, um, and then you test it again and see if it, it works or not. So that's really the flow diagram of, of such uh, TDD uh, lifecycle. So if we don't write the test first, then often the tests are uh, never rested written. TDD, if you want to simplify it uh, in an equation, is test first. You want to test first, but because you're testing first and you want to succeed with the testing, the first approach of, of your coding might not be the best approach. So you will need to refactor to make your code better and better has better quality. So you restructure your code to improve uh, the quality. This is why refactoring is important. And um, I don't think I have time to go over this, but a lot of you might be already um, aware of what is refactoring. Um, again, refactoring, maybe this is the most important thing that I'll say about refactoring in this session is it does not apply to only your code, your business logic and, and you know how you calculate things and, and so on. It applies to um, your database, your, your tables, your columns, your store procedures, everything is there, and applies to the UI, the way that you design UI, the like locations of buttons and how you uh, you know move from one session to the other, one screen to the other, all of that you can tweak it. You're still delivering the same uh, features uh, per the requirement um, uh, or the user story, but you're tweaking it a little bit, and, and that, uh, again, uh, uh, TDD makes the life um, of the developer much easier because it can retest that uh, much easier if you've already written your tests be before you start coding. Uh, that's more stuff about refactoring, and, and Martin Fowler wrote the book on refactoring, and even though it's more than 15 years old, uh, it's still the book when it comes to refactoring for anybody who is interested. Um, so TDD is different really from uh, testing as we used to do it. Um, it's really enabling the developer using all of these uh, frameworks for the continuous integration, continuous development to be more confident uh, and more comfortable to tackle technical depths and changes um, head on. And this is, goes more about to talk about the continuous integration. So we'll talk more about that in the uh, course. Um, uh, dedicate you know uh, a couple of hours on this um, as part of the actual being practical about how to make the TDD uh, works. Um, you need to consider continuous improvement and continuous um, uh, sorry com continuous integration and continuous deployment. And again, as I mentioned, it's not just non-prod to prod, it's within the non-production environment. So this is some, something that you uh, should consider to move from one environment to the other. And again, having cloud right now, let it be Azure or Amazon Web Services or what have you, AWS, and um, that actually makes the case uh, more for, for uh, better attention that should be given to continuous integration and deployment. And that will take us to ATDD, and um, just briefly saying it now, now, the ATDD, you can think of it as TDD, you test first, you do refactoring, but your stories that you are writing are more well-defined 
uh, more structured around what does it mean for the user to accept it. So not us developers defining what is done, what is pass for a certain user story. It's really, really driven by the end user. What does the end user say? So that, that, that's a small specification per se to, um, to TDD. And I'll leave it at that, but we'll talk more about it um, in, in the course. And that's also very similar, overlaps a little bit with the BDD, the behavioral uh, design. It's Again, it's more of TDD is, is more of a methodology, like very similar to Agile, when you say Agile. Uh, but you really, when you implement Agile, you go to Scrum and you say, okay, I want to implement Scrum. Very similar to that. You say, I'm TDD. But if you want to implement TDD and have specifics, you consider BDD or you consider ATDD. So these are specifics um, that tells you, for example, a certain structure of your test, how it should look like, what are the um, naming conventions that you use, to how you structure you know, your, your story um, to be able to deliver that. So again, you can think of the BDD and ATDD as specific case uh, or use cases um, or case studies for the uh, TDD. Talked about that briefly. This is the principle of ATDD. So, for example, if you want to define it, you have to say structure it in given, when, then. Uh, you want to search Google, for example, for the ATDD. You're excited about ATDD, and after this session, you'll go and check it out. So, if you want to write that as as a, a story, as a test, say given, you know, that you are you you have the Google page open. That's your your precondition. Um, when I search for ATDD, I expect such and such results. So this is how the ATDD try to match that to what the user thinks um, of an acceptable um, uh, use case uh, that uh, that passes. And there are different uh, formats that helps you um, to basically have this good coverage of um, ATDD's um, stories and tests. That will take us to tools, and there are tools um, that we will be mentioning, and again, I'll leave it to the students to pick which one that you want to use, and um, even doesn't have to be in this list, uh, but we have the Cucumber, um, it, it, it gained momentum in the last few years, and maybe focusing more on the BDDs, um, and, and that's something that is based on Ruby, um, so not necessarily you need to know Ruby to use it, but it helps, and that's something um, that we might suggest that uh, people are interested or interested in um, in Cucumber to use it. I mentioned Mokito. Um, uh, I was actually um, checking its history a little bit and was surprised to see that it was uh, the ninth popular Java library among 10,000 GitHub uh, projects in 2013. So that tells you that uh, TDD overall is gaining momentum, but automated tested testing mocking frameworks that helps TDD, even if people that cannot, do not call themselves test-driven uh, teams, they still use some of the features of the TDD to enhance their testing um, uh, productivity. And that's something that also happened with Agile overall. People are still doing some waterfall out there, but they have um, borrowed some of the Agile uh, principles, which is which should be totally okay. We don't we don't need really to be either you know 100 percent or nothing. There's definitely a lot of space in between for for improvement. I'll, I'll be happy to take um, whatever the environment can can sustain, even if it's not 100 um, percent. And that will take us to MLQ uh, or Mock. That's another library, maybe targeting more the .NET frameworks uh, for the .NET developers out there. Additional resources, just um, if you can, I'll leave it for a, uh, for a second there. Um, these are um, articles, not necessarily books, uh, that you can check. Again, it's, they are different pieces of the puzzle. Again, TDD, just, it's not just one thing. It's different pieces that you put together all the way from um, you know, being agile until all the way you uh, choose your tools uh, to implement and write your code and your thinking and your communication with the other teams and, and all of that um, part of it is not something that I can claim to be it's easy. Um, anybody that says, you know, shifting to TDD from a non-TDD environment is easy, uh, I think will be oversimplifying it and, and basically causing more damage. Um, we should really 
uh, be practical about it or pragmatic about it, even though that we're enthusiastic about Agile and TDD, we shouldn't oversimplify because that usually fire back uh, because you go to the you know your leadership and say, oh, this is easy, and then it takes six months and you haven't really you know developed anything with TDD yet, and it says, oh, didn't you say it was easy? And so we need to be practical about it and set the expectation uh, correctly. It's definitely. Um, uh, worthwhile, and, and, and I think it has proven itself to be um, a valid approach for many, uh, but at the same time, it does not come uh, with uh, with zero price. And, and with that, I think we have uh, about five minutes or four minutes for, for questions. I need to give the uh, control back. Yes, I'm going to take that over, Mohammed. I do have a couple of questions, um, and I think one you just touched on. Um, there was a question on what position or role would rely on TDD? So everything. <laughs> everything <laughs> will, like an agile uh, methodology. I mean, if, if you claim that only developers need to know about Agile, then you haven't seen it in real life. I mean, it, it can work, but it's almost like somebody that is limping. Um, uh, if, if the development team being the developers, the designers, the architects, the testers, um, if, uh, the data engineers, if these are the only people that know what is Agile is, um, it can work and, and there will be a lot of benefits. But it's better if the actual project managers know, the DBAs, the system administrators, the, 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 the business side, like if you have business analysts or clinical analysts like we do, you know, if the people around you that you talk to, even the end users, I mean, the end users should know what to expect, that they are free to to come back and ask for, for changes, you know, so they, they shouldn't shy away from talking a little bit about agility with the end users, even if they are not IT personnel. So it's really everybody. And I'm not saying that you know everybody should attend and take detailed training on TDDs, but I think uh, a lot of the IT people, technical staff uh, members, will benefit from knowing uh, more about TDD. Okay. And the other question would be, would I require special software for this class? It will require... Yeah, it will require a software. So you will need to make choices when it comes to um, Java, .NET, PHP, Perl, Ruby, something that you want to do. In theory, if you want, if you don't want to write any code because you are a project manager, you don't want to write any code. Um, that's fine. You can still write pseudocode, but the idea is you will need to write something, even on a piece of paper, um, to be able to benefit from it. And I will ask for that in the course. I'll ask you to write it on a piece of paper and send, or basically a Word document or a text editor. Um, and But um, I won't, being agile, I wouldn't say no if people write it on a piece of paper and scan it or take an, a picture of the iPhone and send it to me, totally fine. Um, but the idea is you need to communicate these, um, you know, how you're thinking of your uh, testing. That's really it. What, what is your, you know, the testing that you're thinking, how that can be implemented to improve uh, the development. So at the end of the day, if you don't want to install any software and you write your ideas on a pseudocode and piece of paper and, and, and send me that, you, know, you can benefit still significantly from the course, but you will even benefit more if you choose a programming language. One of these tools that you mentioned, Mokito or uh, Cucumber or something, and stop playing with that to actually deliver some of the um, exercises that I will share. Okay. Well, Mohammed, thank you so much for your presentation, and thank you for all that attended. Um, we will conclude this webinar. Uh, it also is being recorded, so it's available um, within 24 hours. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you.